Hey guys, thank you for watching. This video will be about PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and kind of a general outline about uh, managing your hormones naturally. So the scope of a hormone imbalance is really large. So let's look at a few symptoms. Um, you have mood swings, hot flashes, night sweats, fatigue, headaches, depressed, anxious, nervous, irritable, tearful, memory lapse, um, weight gain, premature aging, vaginal dryness, um, heavy menses. And as you see, the list kind of keeps going. Um, any kind of bleeding changes, um, pain throughout your period um, can kind of tell you that you are having a hormone imbalance. Now, you could always go to a doctor to find out um, what hormones your body is specifically overproducing or underproducing, and they will most likely prescribe you um, pills on top of birth control, which is not always great for the body. So if you're looking for something that is more natural, then this video is for you. So I have a hormone imbalance that is technically incurable, um, it's, which is PCOS. When I went to the doctor, I was having problems with acne, uh, weight problems, excessive thirst, anxiety, few or no periods, um, little to no sex drive, high blood pressure, um, insulin resistance, and just a lot of other things. And so I was tested and it did come out that I do have PCOS. And immediately the doctor prescribed me spr uh, spironolactone, which is kind of like helps balance your testosterone um, for your hormones and then birth control. I didn't, I was actually unable to take any of the birth control because of a brain injury I had a few years ago. Um, and birth control actually increases the pressure of blood in your brain. So birth control wasn't an option for me. I was sent to, um, I was given advice to go to a class to kind of help balance your hormones. Um, and so I decided that maybe there was more of a natural way that I could balance them and that I should take this class and kind of see what kind of foods I should eat to help with my hormone imbalance. So a little bit more about PCOS. Um, the left is a normal ovary and on the right is a polycystic ovary. So if you saw the symptom guidelines for PCOS and you think you might have it, I would suggest going to a gynecologist and getting an ultrasound because that is the only definitive way to test to see if you um, do have PCOS. And if you do have PCOS, you can either choose to take the medications and birth control that they prescribe you, or you can buy the book, which I am currently using, called The Woman Code. So the way that I've been dealing with PCOS, um, I've been taking classes on hormone management, but I haven't really had too much luck with that because I am a vegan and a lot of the recommendations they give you um, are mainly for kind of like meat eaters or vegetarians. So I decided to look online and find um, possibly a book or a website that could help me. And I found probably the, my, the best resource that I have found is this book, The Woman Code. So this book kind of encompasses a lot of hormone problems, even endometriosis, um, she mentions in this book as her diet and what she recommends um, can really help people, just any kind of person that has um, hormone problems. So, and she does give a lot of recommendations for a vegan and a vegetarian diet, and she includes a four-day cleanse for your hormones, which I did, and honestly, after the cleanse, I noticed a really huge difference in my skin and in my energy levels. So if you're kind of looking for a natural route, I suggest that you buy this book because it will be one of your greatest resources in healing your body from within. So when you read this book, it kind of talks about um, balancing your blood sugar. I found online a lot of things that talk about foods that you should avoid if you have PCOS and um, hormone problems. The main one being high GI foods, anything that causes um, effects in your blood sugar levels. And this is sugar, um, even coconut sugar, and a lot of maple syrup falls into this category. You want to stay away from dairy, um, white sugar, caffeine, because it increases estrogen levels and you already have so many different things going on with your hormones. You don't want to add um, the caffeine's effects in there. So white flour and white rice. 
Really, for me, um, I actually avoid kind of any type of pasta or flour just while I'm trying to heal my hormones. Um, hydrogenated oils, um, I follow a high-carb, low-fat diet, so this really didn't didn't pertain to me. But alcohol, it worsens metabolism of sugar. Uh, gluten grains, especially if you think you may have a gluten intolerance, I would stay far away from gluten and then there's at the bottom, it says red meat, which I already don't eat as a vegan. So some examples of low glycemic fruits and vegetables. Um, actually, most vegetables are going to be low glycemic. Um, just white potatoes and corn are kind of up there. And if you're going to be eating white potatoes, you can kind of curve the insulin spike if you're eating a lot of vegetables with the white potatoes. So you see apples, oranges, plums, sweet peppers. Um, as long as you're eating the foods, whole foods, it, you don't really have anything to worry about. Now, if you're wanting like to drink a ton of apple juice or a huge, like a 10 banana smoothie, this will cause a lot of problems with your insulin. So I would try to stay far away from really large smoothies. Um, usually I, in my smoothies, I just use a few bananas and vegetables just so I don't have that crazy insulin spike that happens after you drink a smoothie. So another part of balancing your blood sugar is kind of staying away from the refined grains and eating more whole grains. As you can see, when I'm, when I'm talking about it, it's like brown rice, brown rice, oatmeal, popcorn, whole grain barley, whole grain cornmeal, um, and some stuff you want to stay away from, like noodles, white bread, um, white sandwich bread, white rice, buns, rolls, kind of cornbread. You want to try and eat as many whole foods as possible. And when I say whole foods, I mean foods that are the same as if you would find them in nature. They don't come in a box. You can buy them from the bulk food section and you can buy them from the produce section. Um, and you can, of course, you can use like sauces to kind of make everything taste better. But I would try and stay away from anything that has high fructose corn syrup or really large amounts of sugar. So I, I still buy um, like salad dressings and things to season my food. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can kind of see the stuff that I buy and that I use if you kind of want ideas on like what should you be putting on your food that's actually good for you and that's not going to cause these crazy insulin spikes. Now, balancing your blood sugar is probably the most important thing in getting your hormones uh, back to a normal state. So I've been kind of doing the woman code and then a diet, like a whole foods plant-based diet for about a couple months, aiming more towards eating stuff that wasn't really hardcore raising my insulin. And already I had really bad cystic acne and I'm seeing just a huge improvement in my skin. I'm seeing a huge improvement in energy levels, in digestion. Um, I just had my period and it wasn't crazy crazy painful like it usually is. Um, so I really do think buy this book and look into it yourself on how you can heal your body naturally. Don't just take the pills that your doctor is giving you because a pill is not always the answer. So another huge part of getting your hormones in check is stopping um, to use the things that are getting into your system that disrupt the endocrine system, which is the system that controls your hormones. Um, stuff like medical metals, um, industrial chemicals, a lot of personal care products if they are not organic. Um, and if, if you read in the book, it kind of talks about staying away from personal care products that have parabens. You don't want any sodium um, laurel, laurel sulfate um, pesticides. That's why it's very important to buy organic. And she kind of goes through which fruits and vegetables you really do need to buy organic. Um, you can also look online for their dirty dozen and see which ones carry the more pesticides and you really want to stay away from those chemicals. You also kind of want to make sure um, everything that you're using, even your toothpaste, doesn't have anything that could potentially um, disrupt your hormones. You don't want to be using any type of plastic. You want to stay away from plastic unless it says BPA free. You want to stay away from uh, a lot of pharmaceutical drugs that can influence your hormones. 
you want to buy basically um, almost everything organic if you can. And if you can't, please just look up, read the book. Um, you can also look online for endocrine um, disrupting chemicals. Try and stay away from them as much as possible because no matter what you do when it comes to eating the foods, if you have like, you're using this stuff, you're drinking a lot of water bottles that have BPA in them, um, no matter what you do food wise, your hormones may never be perfect because you're using using these things that have these chemicals that once they go in your body, your body thinks that it's their own chemicals. And so it sends the wrong misfires and just lots of chaos can come from that. Here's another short photo. Um, it talks about all of these mimic estrogen in your body um, comes from plastics to cosmetics containing parabens and flatlates, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, pesticides, um, any sort of cleaning products. I switched to using, um, I use like my favorite natural brand is seventh generation. And in the seventh generation products, you're not going to find a lot of the chemicals that are in other products that you're trying to stay away from. So I use seventh generation for like laundry detergent, dish detergent, for my toilet cleaner. And then I use Dr. Bruner's magic soap um, for like cleaning counters and stuff. It always, it also helps not to kind of be smelling the chemicals. So my house smells really fresh and natural. You also want to stay away from like stuff like Glade plugins, um, air refresheners, all that kind of stuff, all these crazy chemicals that you shouldn't be having, they're not natural and you shouldn't be having them around your body, you should really work on slowly um, finding other ways. Start burning incense, um, natural organic incense, um, essential oils. You can buy an essential oil diffuser instead of using a lot of these things that honestly have tons of chemicals that aren't safe for us to use. So another huge part of balancing your hormones is sleep. Um, we all need it, and honestly, if you're already dealing with all these problems, sleep should be one of the easiest things you can do for your body. Um, for me, that was kind of what I struggled with, but now that I get at least eight hours of sleep a night, I feel a ton better. And if you're dealing with weight issues or just in general, I suggest that you go on at least a 30-minute walk every day, um, kind of increase your time. Um, and if you can't, if you miss a walk one day, that's perfectly fine. Um, but killing yourself at the gym, that actually, if, if you're having hormone problems, you probably already have adrenal fatigue and killing yourself at the gym and doing really long bouts of any kind of activity like cardio and stuff is, is doing more harm than good on your body. So just taking a brisk walk, um, for me, I work my, I do usually an hour every day, um, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the evening. And that's that. And plus yoga a few times a week is the only exercise I usually get. And I've been losing weight and, um, I have more energy honestly than when I was going to the gym and killing myself, um, four days a week. So an herbal remedy that really works for me, um, I'm not sure if it is uh, mentioned in the book or not. But I drink cinnamon, and this was something that I found online, and so I immediately started doing it. So if you're wanting to drink like some type of juice, add in at least a teaspoon of cinnamon or drink cinnamon tea beforehand. And cinnamon honestly helps regulate your blood sugar levels, and it's been known to do that in many scientific tests. Um, and you can buy a pill, or for me, the taste is just really delicious, so I make sure to add it into my oatmeal and any kind of, like if I'm going to drink water watermelon juice. I know that's has is watermelon is really high on the glycemic index. Um, so I mix that with cinnamon and I have no problems afterwards. So as always guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, you can ask either on Instagram or on this video. And if you really like this video and you kind of want to know more ways about balancing your hormones, um, please just let me know if I get enough um, people asking about it, I will make more videos because of course this one is just was a short one just to give you a brief overview and to tell you about the book, The Woman Code. I hope everyone has a blessed day.